There are times when thank you, <laughs> it just doesn't seem like quite enough to say. Times when the gift received just really demands more. Hey, today I've got a question that'll make you think about thankfulness. Welcome to Mornings with Bishop Robert. Thanks for joining me. I, I really am grateful you're here. My goal is to introduce people to the Jesus they never knew, then help them get to know him and his word personally and better. So if our time together today speaks to your heart, let me invite you to like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Every language in the world has a simple word or, or phrase to express the feeling of gratefulness for an act of kindness. In English, we say, thank you. In French, it's merci. In Hebrew, toda. Usually only one or two words. I think it might be a subtle nudge to say them more often. I love to say thank you and express my gratefulness. I make it a point to say it when a server at a restaurant is refilling my coffee or delivering my order. You know, just as an aside, one of the things I notice in dealing with others is how they treat wait staff. Do they give orders and say, yeah, bring me the ham and cheese omelet with home fries? Or do they treat them with respect and say, oh, could I please have the turkey sandwich? I think it reveals a lot about a person. I believe that saying thank you well is an important skill. So I'm deliberate about sending a text or an email or, or even a handwritten note to folks when I'm really grateful for something they've done. Some people say it's the little things that count, but I mean, if they have such a significant impact, are they really only little things? Let me encourage you to develop an attitude of gratitude. If you look for the things that you can be thankful for, you'll get very good at finding them. You know, I was, I was told a story about a king who went hunting game with his friend. And as the king shot the arrow, the bowstring just kind of sliced off his thumb and it was a freak accident. And as the king's attendants were binding up the wound, his friend said, well, praise God, because he's in control. Well, the king was furious at this. He ended up throwing his friend in jail. Now, sometime later, the hand had healed somewhat, and the king had learned how to shoot with the other hand, and he was hunting, and he, he ventured into a land where he had never been before. Suddenly, he was surrounded by cannibals. They tied him up. They were ready to cook him. Then they saw the hand with no thumb. No perfect, no cook, said the chief, and they let him go. Well, he got back to his land and he went to the jail and, and he apologized to his friend. He said, you, you were right. Not having a thumb saved my life. Well, his friend said, praise God, I've been in prison for so long. The king says, how can you praise God for that? He said, well, my friend, if I hadn't been in prison, I probably would have been hunting with you. And look, two thumbs. <laughs> when I stop and, and I think of all that my Heavenly Father has done for me, given to me, provided for me, opened to me, blessed me with, even over just the past few weeks, thank you. It just doesn't seem to be enough. I had it in mind as I sat down this morning to kind of write a personal thank you note to God, like I've done with so many folks, and kind of, you know, just invite you to read along. I was hoping it might offer some form of encouragement. Then I thought better of it. I mean, the list of things would go on and on, and, you know, each item would be of great significance to me, but quite naturally, much, much less to you. It would devolve into something akin to a person at an award ceremony. You know, oh, and I want to thank Tom, and I have to thank Dick, and I've got to make sure I mention Harry, and, you know, it just sort of loses something in the listing. So instead, can I invite you to stop for a minute, grab a cup of coffee or water or whatever, 
And then take whatever time you need and recall the things for which you are grateful, the things that God has done in your life, the things that make you want to say thanks. Now really, please, don't, don't just skim over this. It's really not a rhetorical question. It truly is worth much more than the time it's going to take to recall and consider. So I was thinking perhaps rephrasing that question might help you reconsider my point. So I'll close with that one final question I mentioned at the very beginning. A question designed to bring actual gratefulness into your heart, into sharp focus. It's a question designed to help you do what today's verse instructs us to do. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. So here's the question. If you woke up today with only the things you thanked God for yesterday, how much would you have? Well, before you leave to start considering the things you're thankful for, I'm going to ask you to help me introduce people to the Jesus they never knew and help them get to know him and his word personally and better. Please like this video. It really does help more people see it, especially if you put a comment. Then click follow or subscribe so you and I can get together every day. I'd love for you to read Count to One, God's Plan for Christian Unity. And I'll pop a free copy in your inbox. You just got to click the link in the description. Tell me where to send it. And one more thing. Just one. Take a moment and share this video with a friend, would you? Because as you do, that makes you part of the team. Touching hearts all over the world with the love of Jesus. Thank you for helping.